It's the Rebel Taxi Pizza Party Podcast, and I'm Pan Pizza, and my guest didn't show up because he was sick, but uh, who, who, I'm Pan Pizza. Who are these people? Hey, 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 Pan, why don't you mercifully make fun of make fun of him for a bailing, huh? No, he's a respectable person. We can't make fun of him. He'll kill me on sight. Oh, yeah. He's got Cartoon Network <laughs> connections. We were going to have the, the head writer of Clarence, uh, Spencer Rothbell, but he got sick, so we got oh. these chuckle nuts oh. to fill in for him. Oh, we are def- we definitely <laughs> are nutty chuckles. Yeah, time to chuckle some nuts. Uh-huh. But I'm Pan Pizza. Who are you people? I'm Nolan. I'm Izzy. I'm uh, Paleo. Hello, Paleo Sino. <laughs> and I'm Saber. Yeah, we haven't had Paleo on. Uh, Paleo, remind everyone who you are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, Paleo Steno. I make a uh, movie, cartoon reviews, and and uh, mostly like animated films. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's been a, like what a year, year and a half since I've been on. I think mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. I mean, you basically do vlogs and stuff. But um, for anyone who hasn't seen your videos, do you have one that you would recommend with them watching? No, I don't watch it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, any, any like recent animated, uh, films that I've done videos on, like I just did one on the Smurfs movie that just came out. Mm-hmm. The one nobody saw. Yeah. The one nobody saw. I didn't make that m- much money at all. It'll make its money in other countries. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they, uh, here they didn't really care. They just said, eh, just dump it up next to boss baby. Like we don't care. The Smurfs live action movies did their damage. Yeah, they yeah. all were terrible. It yeah, definitely sells with like the uh, the critics' ratings because once I saw the movie, I was like, "This isn't really that bad." Hmm. Like, what did they think was was that bad about it? Hmm, I don't know. Well, I didn't see it, but I kind of find it similar to the Sonic situation where Sonic 06 came out and was trying to be a live action AAA game, and it fucking failed. And every game that came after it wasn't really that bad. Yeah, but the <laughs> critics were like, "Well." Sonic 06 was a bad game, so <laughs> this one must be too. Yeah. Except in the case of Sonic Lost World, that was a shitty game. Although, uh, my, my favorite uh, Paleo video was the one where um, <laughs> pa- Paleo reviewed Trolls, and he's very positive about it, and then Jim's review was just like the most <laughs> yeah, opposite, right. the most negative <laughs> review, saying, if you support the Trolls movie, you're, wor- you're gonna be fucking Hitler or something. I liked the characters, I liked the humor, I even liked the cover songs, and the story is pretty simple and actually has a pretty good message to it. Yeah, I actually had a lot of fun with DreamWorks Trolls. I never thought I would say that. But then if major studios are doing this, maybe they're really stopping it from getting anywhere by making such terrible commercial fascistic kind of films like Trolls that hold both animation back and probably humanity as well. Because this is really a kind of a piece of dog shit type of a movie that really probably shouldn't be seen by anyone, especially children, because I I just absolutely totally hate this movie. <laughs> that was that was, Maybe that was the controversial video that, that decided my I, that caused my ad revenue to go down. <laughs> what? Oh God! Didn't <laughs> Jim call that trolls movie communistic or something? Something like, like that. Or... I mean, basically the trolls movie though, it's kind of like a movie that was written by Happiness from Inside Out, where basically the message is it is yeah oh my God yeah where the message is like hey you're sad, be happy. That's the that's yeah, the message. Just, just be happy. Yeah. Just stop being depressed. Stop it. Stop it. I say. Stop being sad and being afraid of clowns. Just what's that? Your grandma died and you're, you're scarred for life. Just come on, let okay. it go. But uh, stop, stop, stop being a stick in the mud. Yeah. What's that? Your mom put her head in the oven, fucking killed herself, and then your dad followed suit. God, stop being such a faggot. Just be happy, oh, idiot. Can't say that word, Nolan. We can't say what? it. Microwave. <laughs> Although I would like it for if an edgy girl would have called me the other F word. You know the one. Magnet? Yes. Furry? No. But, you know, just like, come on, Pan, stop. I don't know. There was this one time where I was watching this porno and I... Hey, hang, well, hang on. This is why that person skipped you, by the way. This is why you have me and Paley. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Well, hang on. Let me get to the point. So, essentially, I was watching one of those point of view pornos where it was someone talking to the camera. It was out of curiosity. I wasn't like, you know. Anyway, like, so she was just, like, insulting uh-huh. me. And... I watch ASMR videos, too. <laughs> it's not that. She was insulting me and she she said, come on, you fat. And then I was like, whoa. 
much did you lady. pay for this? You can't say that. <laughs> it's 20, 2016 when I saw this. You can't just go around saying that word. It's, that's just, it's like you, it took me out of the you know the porno. Like what, I was engaged. What was she per hour? Uh, uh, yeah, how much? How much was your? Uh, pay, how much Patreon money did that go? It to? was a fucking <laughs> video on I think X Hamster. I don't know. It's, anyway, hey, we got another guest on here. Who is this person? No, 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 no. I want to hear more about this though. Well, I don't know. It's like you know. Look, I no. feel like I was talking to Paley about this, about how we're not too far off from like with all this VR stuff. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we're gonna have uh, robot sex slaves. Well, I'm, well, no, not that. Jesus Christ, Paley, I'm not going that far. <laughs> I'm just saying that if I if I want a VR set that has a shoe connected to some kind of lever, I can step on my nuts. I'd be a happy man. Oh huh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I did. I did promise myself if the uh, get my Let's Play channel ever became financially viable, I will buy myself a, a VR headset, and most likely I would use it for that, possibly. Although that Rick and Morty VR <laughs> for, for game for the was channel cool. or for for the porn. Well, both. I mean. I mean, I, I mean, it, it's a business expense, you know, but also I can use that on the side, you know, no one will have to know. The government doesn't have to know that I use it for... All this core talk you, reminds you, me of the time I voiced in a hentai. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. That happened. I forgot. What happened? That did. I, uh, I was, I was, I voiced in, uh, a, uh, ama- I wouldn't, I guess amateur hentai wasn't licensed by anybody, but it was, it was definitely, uh, some... It was definitely something fetishy, that's for sure. And I voiced in it when I was uh, a teenager, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. Is it still up? <laughs> uh, there's the the preview is still up. Oh, yeah. Um, you can buy the you can buy the DVD if you. Wait, this is fucking licensed and on being sold in DVDs. Yeah. So I could go to like an FYI video and possibly find that DVD behind like a, one of those anime eighteen sections. You know. You no, know, you'd have to order it online. Oh. Well, I'm sure it'll find its way to like some secondhand shop somewhere. But do you know the name of it? Um, I think it was called Wolf Rookie. Wolf Rookie. So yeah, if you look that up, and uh, Nolan's in there. Are you, are yeah. you on the IMDb yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put that on your LinkedIn profile. A, let's take a look and see if I do have an IMDb just for shits and giggles. Apparently, someone made me an IMDb profile, and it's like, does this really count? Kind um, of. Speaking of IMDb. I know this is teetering on the uh, the uh, YouTuber thing, but Lindsay Ellis, who was Nostalgia Check and talked about all those, uh, it was in all those um, back I glass anniversary movies. Somebody asked her how she felt that those were on her IMDb, and she she was very like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> did she leave? No, she she said I love Doug dearly, but the fact that those are on my IMDb forever scare me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, wow. <laughs> Saber, you have an IMDb. What? Yeah, somebody made a Bronies React one. That's gross. Wow. Put you, and put everybody who's Saber, been on Bronies React on there, except for me. <laughs> I, Saber, I also you have one. Professional documentary. Of course you have an IMDb. Oh my god, we all have IMDb's. Yeah, I, I have one know. too. And the one I don't have one. Oh, Paleo's, like the, <laughs> Paleo's <laughs> the only one who doesn't have an IMDb. Let's all laugh at Paleo. Yeah, I'm not a loser. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Yeah, of course, only... you're nobody. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you, Paleo. You don't I get remember, an IMDb. I remember looking up the Sonic OVA on IMDb, and uh, they had a quotes page, and the quotes were from YouTube poops and not from the actual. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's checking those. Pingus. Pingus? Yeah, all the classic lines. Those were the days. Pinky, my wingy. So apparently I am listed on uh, IMDb as Nolan Jetstream, TV Rebel Taxi series documentary, Unidentified Voice, Nolan, Good or Bad Burger, 2010. What? You weren't even in that. We didn't even know each other when I made that ancient video. Yeah, I this IMDb sucks ass. Yeah, whoever <laughs> made that is a fucking fraud. He don't, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, like, it's kind of weird that... My online web show has an IMDb when it's just like, I don't know, there's so many online web shows. It's really, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just like, is there a point to cataloging them all? Well, like, my IMDb has, like, Anime, Yo Mama, Flagon, and Tom, because I did, like, one little thing for Kerbifer. Mm-hmm. And the actual credit that, like, you know, it actually aired on Netflix is not on it. What the heck? Oh, yeah, your frog <laughs> Yeah, the show. one thing that's actually noteworthy. Yeah, your froggy TV show. But, uh, other, other guest. Wh- who is this other guest that we have? 
Who me? Yeah, Saber Sparks. You didn't introduce yourself. Top one, come on. Oh, I thought, hey. Oh, thank you, Nolan. Uh, hey, yeah, I'm here. Saber in the house. Yeah. yeah. Remind everyone who the heck are you? Um, I make videos on YouTube. I talk about cartoons occasionally. I talk about just media things on YouTube. Just whatever catches my fancy, and I guess they're more like video essays and uh, analysis stuff. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Oh, go ahead. Hmm. oh, I just want to say was like I posted on Twitter once that like I really hate uh, videos that are bl- blah, 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 what ruined, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like if you were on the podcast and then like someone's like, didn't Izzy like complain about this guy? What the fuck? She acted like she was friends with them. And it's like you, you can disagree with like a, a a trend and still like the person behind it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not that personal is just business. <laughs> Yeah, we fucking Lord hate you, business. Saber. Fuck you, Saber. What? Well, it's it's you know, I uh, I had no idea, but now I'm deeply offended. Yeah. so this hurts me. It's cuts deep. <laughs> sorry. Wait, sorry, wait, wait, hold on, I Saber, Saber. You you sound very familiar. Would I have recognized you from a uh, Netflix documentary by chance? Perhaps. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. Oh, I fuck. Yeah, that up. I remember now. I can tell you all about that if you want me to. Oh, yes, because yeah. Saber yes. was in that Brony documentary, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I got my start, I guess, my, my springboard into it all uh, was through My Little Pony. And I broke off from it around, I'd say, what was it, Paleo? Like, uh, 2015? It was around the same time I did. Yeah, you broke off before I did. I, around like 2015, I started doing things like... Because a lot of the folks who, are, who got popular with the Brony stuff... They get stuck with it. There's a glass ceiling. And they're like, well, how do I leave this now if I want to go on to other stuff? Because mm. the fans will go, oh, well, this is a pony, so why do I care? And I was able to bridge the gap by doing things like, well, are fandoms bad? Where it's, it kind of implies yeah. My Little Pony, but it's not just exclusive to that. Or are cartoons you know, just for kids, whatever? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was able to claw my way out <laughs> through that. But back in the day, I, I was part of a brain documentary. Back when I was uh, a rotund young man with a with no beard and a baby face, and I met this guy, some Canadian like film guy in Atlanta, and we went to a Target and we went to the po- toy aisle, to which we were able to film quickly until the Target guys they're like, "Get out of here! I'm like you gotta get out of the store. You can't be in this Aww. aisle." Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was uh. So I guess yeah, I'm on Netflix, but but it's not like wait. glorious. In retrospect, you were filming in the My Little Pony aisle at Target. Yeah. So you were. Fi- it was a bunch of men filming in the k- little girl section of the toy store. Well, the to to the, the it wasn't like the guy filming was like had a trench coat on and had the camera like near his crotch or anything. It was. <laughs> He, it was it was pretty obvious he had a, a camera and he had like a knee you know he took a knee like, right right I know I know but from like the, from an outsider's perspective <laughs> not understanding what's going on that's really fucking creepy yeah but, you know, on the inside I can still say it's weird like <laughs> I, I, there's there's nothing about it that's that's normal that's why it stands out that's why folks are like Ugh. and and there are moments where even I look in the mirror and I go that was weird but so, uh, yeah how much screen time weird. would you say you have in that documentary. Oh, I was at like for like thirty seconds, maybe. Oh, okay. So know. you're in that one scene. Is that like near the beginning? Um, I think it's close to the beginning, kind of like maybe like one third into the the film, because it's more about uh like the 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 girl who is the voice of of Rainbow Dash and Applejack. Her name is Ashley Ball, and this is more about her and her experience with the fandom, not right. about the fandom. If you want that one, you can check out the. I guess Don Delancey one, which that, that or one... you can. <laughs> I was gonna say because like there were, there was like so many different documentaries being uh, worked on back then oh, uh, yeah. about the Bronies because they were like we're we're gonna be the first ones to do it and like because that's when I first met Saber was like in the early 2011 and we had this idea to like hey let's make a documentary so that's what Which me we... and Saber did. We genuinely wanted wanted to do a good job, and I actually was thinking about it a few days ago. I'm like, you know what? Uh, even though the Bernie stuff has kind of come and gone, I'm still proud that we made it. You know, it was a, yeah. it was a good, you know, video or two, whatever. <laughs> and uh, but John Delancey, the guy who's the voice of Q, he uh, he crowdsourced to get some money to make theirs. And the thing is, at the very end, like they tried to sell it back, and people got upset because they're like, why are we? 
have to buy it if you got if you guys raised like almost half a million dollars to to do it, and then mm. folks started to pirate it, and Delance got upset, oh. and then he like disappeared. He disappeared, and people, and the rumor is that he went off to go sailing in the ocean for like a year. So. <laughs> Fuck this! I'm going out to sea. I'm taking my sailboat. Does he still voice uh, Discord or? Yeah, yeah, he does. Okay. Look, he, so, he was he was in like the first episode of the uh, the seventh season. <laughs> so like, this just is the weird. one thing about Kickstarter stuff I always find a little weird. Is that like I always assumed Kickstarter was supposed to be for like a company's first project or something like kickstart the business. So like whenever I see a company like do one game and then make a shit ton of profit and then immediately do another Kickstarter, I feel a little like, uh, yeah. do you really need that? It's yeah, like I, I like. I like companies that like uh, Yacht Club Games. They made Shovel Knight and then they just continued making content. Well, so that's your springboard. You know, you, yeah. you use it to get off the ground and then you do what a business should do. You know, make good products and then earn money from making said products. Don't don't ask for, you know, handouts via Kickstarter or GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a, that was a segue. Uh, hi, yeah, I'm Saber Spark. What's up? But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was just you introducing yourself. Great. <laughs> but Kickstarter, like, it kind of gives you a, a harsh reality when you realize that all that money that was uh, raised for these projects, you find out that wasn't enough, and that was, like, one fraction of, like, a bigger thing, like with Mighty Number no. 9. Like, there were other investors oh, also yeah. working on it, and in the end, it doesn't even matter because it was all crap. Well, they pocketed yeah, yeah, stuff, I think. That's the, that's kind of something I realized recently that I really should have noticed is that games, even when they're small, they they take a lot of fucking money. Yeah. yeah. And and when people when like Kickstarters ask for like even even like five hundred thousand dollars, that's nothing. That that will <laughs> make barely fucking yeah, anything. Yeah. There there are some companies that can do it because like uh, something similar to what my number nine did. Um, there's a company that. Um, yeah, Way Forward did a Kickstarter for um, Shantae. for Shantae. Yeah, and they had like a fraction of what Mighty Number no. Nine had, but made an, a really excellent game. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, look at Undertale. That was like what made by just Toby, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Toby and a few other artists who helped mm-hmm. with assets and stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess the thing is that, like, I, f- I mean, I don't know if if it's their eyes get bigger than their plate or whatever or their appetite. Where they're like, like ukulele. I, I remember watching the Dunkey video, and he said that the what they were aiming for was what, pay like a hundred thousand or something like that, and they got like two million, mm-hmm. something ridiculous like that. So yeah, it's not, it's good to have stretch goals. It's good to you know increase your your product and make it look better if you have if you have the money. But I can't help but feel that a lot of these folks get greedy afterwards, going, hey, just let's just pocket it because yeah. I don't think there's a rule on Kickstarter to say you know like if they give you extra money, well that's yours, buddy. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, if you go back, because um, there was, uh, I think, Smosh Games had, or it was either, no, Yogg's Cast got, like, a couple of million for a game, and it was, like, one of the, like, it was oh, yeah. huge, and then they canceled it two years later. What? Yeah, 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 they're like, sorry, uh, things didn't work out, uh, and, you know, that's part of Kickstarter is that they're not necessarily, like, they, they tried, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. What's, uh, what happened to the Homestuck game? Oh, uh, something happened where the company, the company that was going to make the game, not the creator of Homestuck, the company that was going to make the game, oh yeah, pocketed they, all they, the like, money. Off with the money. I, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of misinformation about the Homestuck game that I'm not entirely sure myself. Yeah, what exactly happened but with to- that? But, but there was a there was a lot of uh, embezzling, I think, and uh, use of the money that what where it wasn't meant to be used etc yeah one of my favorites though is ant simulator where <laughs> the investor the investors or the people behind the project except for the guy who genuinely wanted to make it spent the money on alcohol and <laughs> hookers. Al- alcohol and hookers and the guy, oh yeah and the guy and the guy who genuinely wanted to make it was so distraught and god i i think he just left forever like, I am afraid of ever doing a Kickstarter because I know I'd fuck it up or maybe I'd hire someone to fuck it up. But realistically, I'd be the one to fuck it up somehow. Well, see, the thing about Kickstarters is that, like, you automatically get excited about the idea. You know, like, oh, a new Banjo-Kazooie? That sounds amazing. Ooh, a new Mega Man? That sounds amazing. But, like, no one actually, like, stepped back and goes, okay, now do, do, are the people are trying to create this stuff, are they noteworthy? Do they have experience? Do they know what they're doing? 
uh, like you, I think, you know, if you if you threw a Kickstarter, there'd probably be a couple of pan boys that would like, oh, yeah, pan pizza. Cool. You know, is that what his fan yeah, boys yeah. are pan called? Boys. Pan yeah. boys. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, they'll throw money down. But then, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing. Nope. If you were like, I, I don't know what it is. I get like, you know how to make a web comic. You've made a web comic. Yeah, so if you were free. like, oh, hey, um, well, I could see you doing a Kickstarter to like make a paper version, a physical yeah, uh, of your web comic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in that way, and what I would do if I was in your shoes would be contacting a couple of other noteworthy people who have produced their own independent comics and having, you know, documentation if they showed you how to do it mm-hmm. and that you know what you're doing and yeah. just selling that to the audience. Because Kickstarter is an investment. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't contact Pictures for Sad Children Kickstarter person. What's that? <laughs> pictures for Sad Children. Oh, my God. Yeah, Pictures for Sad Children was a webcomic series by this um, person who I think was going through a deep depression and transitioning. And while they were kickstarting, the Kickstarter was successful, but and the books started getting printed, but they had a complete fucking mental breakdown about capitalism and uh, supporting supporting the man, quote unquote. And they released a video of them burning books, of no. burning the books from the Kickstarter, saying, "For every email I get asking about the book, I will burn another book." <sighs> okay, what if he runs out of books? What's he gonna do? Hopefully, he burns himself. Oh man, we gotta. Okay, we gotta mass email that guy until he burns himself. We gotta do that. That's really crummy. No, it, like if, it, 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 if, if, if you're if if you're having a mental breakdown, then just pull out and okay. and and say, guys, I, I gotta take a break or. I'm sorry, you know, whatever, but don't burn the book. That's so stupid. Yeah, like, just mm-hmm. chill, like, do what I do when I have a mental breakdown and just record a Let's Play, and that should solve everything, hopefully, until you upload it online and everyone sees your humiliation and shame. All right, moving on yeah. from that, that's depressing. I've seen that Let's Play channel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Look, things are improving on my Let's Play channel, you know? Right. Yeah, by not being you. Lots of, I got a, got a little crazy with the Drawn to Death Let's Play, but, you know, it's, it's normal. It's normal. No, the Toy Story one was the one that was terrifying. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. The classic, the the, the first Toy Story uh, Let's Play for the Super Nintendo game that I made on my Let's Play channel. It's it's quite something. I'll link it below with a timestamp. Yeah. Don't watch for it, those guys. Who want, who, for those who want to see the epic breakdown, here's the Kickstarter update. It's uh, update uh, 32. It's over. And there's a video <laughs> where wow. the big fire and everything. It's insane. So, this was a thing that had happened. For the Kickstarter of Sad Pictures for Children, this is quality. Uh, but, uh, Sad Pictures for Children. So, so yeah, I think uh, Kickstarter is, I don't know, I don't know what, what the next Kickstarter will be. Like, I think people people are already lost their hope in it, you know? Well, well, okay, like, okay, for example, there's a few, like, Kickstarters that were semi-successful, like, say, Ukulele. I can't tell how successful it is because I have yet to actually get to play it because it the was... version I fucking bought isn't coming out now because I bought a Wii U version. Oh, yeah. And now yeah, like... for the Switch version, it's going to take forever for that to come out. Right, right. You either have to wait for a Switch, get Steam, or get a refund. That's the three options. And I'm kind of like holding out for the Switch. But like that's a thing that like I obviously I can get a refund because the, the thing is like that's not what I – that's not what I paid for, you know, like I donate it for a Wii U game and now it's no longer a Wii U game, you know, or, uh, you can go with, uh, being puppy cat, which, you know, everyone backed a YouTube series and now it's not. On YouTube. Oh yeah. Mm. And like, I, I mean, I can't complain too much cause I'm going to get a DVD of it. So I'll have the things without having to download some stupid app, but like, uh, I'm still a little salty about Frederator doing that bait and switch where it's like, I get it. Animation's really hard to make profitable on YouTube and you need to change to a different platform. But that was clearly a decision they made with thinking about themselves more. Like you have to do a balance. You have to do both like profiting yourself, but also what's best for the audience and brand. And that just made a huge distrust amongst the huge people. People who are international came and watch that show now because the app yeah. is not international. Hmm. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, Burn. that is a huge distrust. To, like that, that's an insult to the people who paid for it. That's a that's an insult to the people who are watching. 
Like, and, you know, everyone's like, all right, fine, we'll pirate it. And they're like, well, you know, when you pirate it, you're not helping the series thrive. And it's like, yeah, but if we can't watch it otherwise, what do you want us to do? Just not be fans? <laughs> Mm, they're, yeah, like, yeah. Just, they're like they're like just 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 buy our merchandise all right just just leave it at that we'll send you a dvd it's, it's 2005 again we're sending dvds we're not sending blu-rays hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm still heated about that because it's just like i can understand if they made like a second season and put on that or you know bravest warriors they funded it themselves but like when it's crowdfunding you should fulfill the original promise first and that first season on YouTube, and then make future episodes on there. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. That hey. would have been the fair thing. That would have been great for everybody. Hey, but uh, speaking of My Little Pony, <laughs> are you guys excited for the My Little Pony the movie coming out this fall? My Little Pony. Now for the finishing touch. The movie. I'm excited. Who's excited? I'm excited. So excited. Featuring an all-star cast. With an original song performed by Sia. All right. Coming soon. Oh, yeah! October 6th for theaters. It's coming to theaters, and it looks like they just got the same animation assets from the show and just add a crummy shading effect. Well, compared to... Well, since <laughs> since me and Sabre have, like, watched the show, um, uh, it's for so long and have been, like, into the fandom and whatever, uh... I will say that uh, when I first saw the the uh, the trailer, I was like, ah. Uh, I will say that the animation looks a lot smoother than it does in the um, the actual show itself. Mm -hmm. um, but it does look really weird with with that shading on it. Yeah. The I mean, uh, though it to be fair, the animator said that it did not render correct correctly, and that's not the trailer they should have shown. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, because uh, there's a yeah. a teaser trailer out now. It doesn't show actual footage. It shows like just the yeah. Characters. There's no sh there's no footage from the movie. It's just like some animations of the ponies, and that's it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. When I heard it, there was gonna be a My Little Pony movie, I was hoping the animation would be. I don't know. I thought it would be CG or something. Yeah, oh, like yeah. I I've been excited for this movie, but just because it's going to be a two di uh, two dimensional movie in theaters. Yeah, which the last one was SpongeBob out of water. Yeah, yeah, and that was like advertised as a three D movie, yeah. but most of it was two D. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy because like the only the last twenty minutes of that movie were in three D, and the, all of it was two D, which I didn't really like Sponge out of water. I thought it was okay, but it just felt like an extended episode of the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, shouldn't that be what a movie version no. like a movie adaption of a tv show feel Cause, like because like the 2002 movie it felt like a grand adventure and and sponge out of water just felt like uh hey uh, we're just gonna have this on for, we're just gonna have a bunch of basic gags and stuff and the story doesn't really matter you know you want an epic I, adventure i liked it enough except for the the last 20 minutes which were really weird yeah the, i love the cg heroes the, the the look of the CG, how it was rendered, was really, really nice. However, I yeah. did enjoy the 2D elements. Like, I saw it for free on Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. um, like, way later after it was released. I enjoyed it. Like, if I would have paid for it, I'd probably be a little bit more crucial, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's but, okay. Yeah, it's a good, but, like, 6 or 7 out of 10. But My Little Pony, though. I'm, I'm probably more lenient on it because uh, that stop-motion bubbles dolphin. That they had. Oh yeah, hyper intelligent, <laughs> yeah, hyper intelligent dolphin, <laughs> voiced by Patrick Stewart, right? No, I don't think it was him. Um, I forgot who voiced him. But uh, My Little Pony, the movie, like I, I, I stopped caring about My Little Pony years ago. Uh, so is anyone excited? Like, is anyone actually going to see this in theaters? I am just because I kind of feel obligated to, yeah. but also I, I do want to see more two D uh, movies in theaters. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Hmm. Uh, until you guys told me that the movie's coming out, I didn't realize My Little Pony was still going on. <laughs> it is, but no one really cares anymore. It's not as big as it was like a few years ago. I think whatever lighting they're using for that, I hope that's not what they're doing for the actual movie, because it the they have like this weird Bevel and Boss drop shadow thing yeah. on the. I don't think they models. are mainly because the animator said that it that wasn't the render that they wanted to be shown. Okay, well that doesn't mean they won't use it. That might be just they they yeah. you, you can use the same layers, change some of the blending modes, change some of the yeah. alphas, and it can look a hundred times better. Mm -hmm. I don't know the the style of the show already looks pretty clean. That I really wouldn't want to see a bunch of like elements thrown on top of it. Um, maybe yeah. you could do like a really light ramp to give the characters a little bit more depth. Mm -hmm. 
as far like a gradient ramp. Because I'm just wondering um, if it's just gonna look like the show, but in the big screen, and that's just gonna be. Yeah, weird. I was wondering why it was looking like that in the trailers because in the um in like the character uh, promotional character art, it doesn't look like that at all. Hmm. So for the yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. So there's it's... promotional art for the movie. I just see a poster. yeah for like new characters and stuff. Send a link. I want to see that sheet. Also. So um, I'm guessing they're keeping the uh, ponies voice actresses, or are they? <laughs> yeah, they are. Although at the end they of the trailer, just... they did announce all these celebrity voice actors, and I'm like, who are they going to yeah. play? Just random background they're, cameos. They're playing uh, like new characters that are like I, I, just for the movie, I guess. Yeah. Because it, it just seemed like it's going to be like one of those big adventure type movies. <sighs> yeah. I it's hope it be... ends with I hope it ends with Dragon Ball Z shit, like one of the season finales did. Oh yeah, that happened. Maybe <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. So I know there's like one thing that pony fans really really wanted. Did they ever introduce mer ponies to the show? Mer ponies? That's it, that's actually going to be in the movie. Mer- oh, okay, okay. Yeah, is that like mermaid ponies? Yeah, from the original like uh, like uh, sea ponies. It doesn't to- what's that company Tokidoki make? Tokidoki Company. They make uh, don't they have a whole toy line of mermaid ponies? I don't know. We don't follow girls' toys like you do. No one knows what I'm talking about. It's it's this. It's one of those. It's it sort of looks like Hello Kitty. These Japanese looking apparels where it's just like these thick outlined ponies. I don't know. If Here, you look on the uh, the Twitter for the movie and you scroll down, you see some of the character art with the um, celebrity voices. Hmm. And they don't look like they do in the trailer, really. Hmm. Uh, as far as how it's styled they kind of look like neopets art it looks like one of those direct dvd like cases where they just like add a little bit of uh yeah like you know disney cartoons where all of a sudden the dvd case has like oh, yeah. extra shading yeah that's what it looks like only um honestly they all look fine except for um fluttershy 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 um she's the one that's got like her shading's a little off and then rainbow yeah. dash looks too dark that just looks bad everyone else looks fine though yeah i'm mainly talking about uh like just scroll down below and you'll see the the um the characters by the celebrity voices mm-hmm. oh okay yeah oh yeah. so those designs are cool that hedgehog thing oh they got tay diggs and Kristen chenoweth they got they got a Griffin Pirate. I'm gonna yeah. see this now. I don't know who Griffin Pirate is. I don't either. No, but the no, an cool. actual Griffin Pirate. Oh. <laughs> okay. No. Nope. Wait, 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 wait. Let's stop. Stop for a second. Did Pan actually legitimately thought Griffin <laughs> Pirate is a is a celebrity Pirate? name? You said <laughs> they got Griffin Pirate, and that sounds like a name. A porn star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God, no! But is that all for My Little Pony? Uh, yeah. Yay! Thank you. But uh, next bit of news. Um, hey, you guys remember that 2002 2D animated DreamWorks movie, uh, Spirit Stallion of the no. Sherman? Yeah, that's wrong? the one that um Samuel Jackson was in, right? Was he? What? I was I was hoping everybody would say no, but you kind of ruined that joke. So. Well, fuck all. Well, I was uh, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Like for all we know, Samuel Jackson could be in that movie. Now I'm making fun of that out. other that that like oh uh, spin the thing, spirit. But... Oh, yeah. that was a fucking movie. Oh, oh. <laughs> that would imply <laughs> someone remembered that movie. I'm proud. Nobody remembers the spirit, the the Sin City ripoff movie. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> but spirit, yeah. So they're bringing back Spirit, the two uh, D DreamWorks movie, and they're making a. I think it's a Netflix. Yeah, it's a Netflix show, and it's about they changed the plot line from like a spirit. Uh, I mean, a horse trying to get its freedom during like the I think the Civil War, and now it's about these little girls and they go on horse adventures, and one of them is Spirit the horse, and it's CG animated and it's on Netflix and it's really girly. Yay! Is it still gonna be narrated by the horse? I doubt it. Well, the horse was well. To be fair, the voice of the horse was Matt Damon, so I doubt it. I don't think Matt Damon's gonna show up for this crap. <laughs> Matt Damon. I don't think Matt Damon even knows he did this movie. Here's the thing. Here's the trade-off. You can either have a Pixar movie, which may get a sequel now. Before, it wasn't really that common. Now, it seems what everyone has decent enough sales to get a sequel. But if you go DreamWorks, not only do you get a sequel, but you get a TV series, uh, like five different spinoffs. 
a huge toy line. Like I, yeah. <laughs> DreamWorks knows how to make their stuff profitable. They don't have to be good. <laughs> it just has to be profitable. Yeah, just like, hey, uh, remember that show? Uh, I mean, remember this movie? It's getting a, a Netflix show, and that's getting a Netflix show, and that's getting a Netflix show. Everyone gets a Netflix Captain show. Underpants get next, gets a Netflix show. That could happen. I could see oh, that. Oh, speaking of DreamWorks, uh, Saber, you recently did a video on DreamWorks. Yeah. I did. Yeah. What was the what was the video, yeah. Saber? It's called what what's ruining DreamWorks? Yeah. And uh, uh, nah, I and in, in most of these videos that I do, I uh, talk to Jim about because Jim's just brilliant and. I uh, I hire him to help me do research, and he's just good at fact checking and stuff. And I mean, ultimately, it's more of an opinion thing. Unless you want to look at their finances, which I think financially they aren't doing awful. I mean, they're not like Disney right now, but they're like staying afloat with things like Home and Boss Baby. Um, and then, as far as I guess, like the quality goes, in my opinion, I'm like, yeah, they they've kind of gone downhill. But then again, they really never went that high up a hill to, get, to begin with. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's like yeah. they, they have, like, I mean, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train a Dragon. You know, those are the top tier ones, in my opinion. Yeah, those are the ones that they advertise when they say, from the makers of Shrek and yeah. Kung Fu Panda. Like, Disney says, yeah, from the makers of our last two movies. And DreamWorks is like, uh, from the makers of Shrek, which came out 20 years ago almost, and <laughs> Kung Fu Panda... <laughs> Wait a second. It's the last two movies because I always thought it was kind of like arbitrary or just like from, yeah. It's like the new movies from the makers of Ratatouille. It's like, like what? Like like for, <laughs> um, like for um uh Coco, the new Pixar movie. Like I see commercials that say from the makers of Finding Dory, Inside Out. Like the, the basically the last two yeah. movies. If they don't mention the good dinosaur. They're not going to mention that movie. Yeah. They're... <laughs> well, they they usually uh, they, what I always see is. From the makers of Toy Story, and then whichever two are most recent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but DreamWorks is um, like... What you said... DreamWorks is like, uh, we don't talk about those movies we just made six months ago. Yeah, but uh, something that Saber brought up in his video is that um, Illumination is pretty much DreamWorks that knows how to make money. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the is insane with their advertising. Yeah, they're really good at advertising. They they really know how to push, like, Minions, Secret Life of Pets, Sing. Like, it's it's basically, like, I forget what the rule or the law. For, for goes everywhere. What's that? I see, like, dolls and, like, plushies for all of those movies everywhere. Yeah, but the advertising, like, they, they figure, like, if we just do it enough, they, people just won't forget. Like, it'll be stuck in yeah. their head. And Be sure you don't forget. Like, l- learn from this good dinosaur. It's called advertising. Yeah, up yours, the good dinosaur. You ain't shit. Or, like, the extinct. I made a dinosaur joke. Nobody gave a shit about the good dinosaur. But, yeah, your video about DreamWorks basically amounted to do, like, look, DreamWorks was a cynical asshole company. Fuck them. That's basically what you said in that video. Yeah, I thought Jeffrey Katzenberg would have gotten along well with Steve uh, Jobs. Yeah. Even though it's funny because they hated each other, though. So yeah. I don't know. They hate the very they hate themselves because they see themselves in each other. It's so sad. Yeah, they're two big asshole businessmen. <laughs> but it's really weird just to bring back spirit of all things and just make this random ass little girl show with horses like it, it, it reminds me of like when a video game disappears for a long time and it's like hey we're back in uh, an ios app form like crazy taxi like, oh, <laughs> City roller Rush. coaster tycoon Ugh. oh well, yeah oh you god know, yeah is uh, it well first of all roller coaster tycoon's amazing <laughs> second of all um is it really that like shocking because like Almost all, uh, I mean, besides Shrek, almost all of DreamWorks properties have a Netflix original series going on right now. Okay, when's uh, Rotel Dorado coming out? When's that TV series coming when's out? When's the Prince of Egypt Soon. series coming out? <laughs> right, what, I'm, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is Shrek, it has... Shrek already uh, has, like, d logs and shit. I mean, Shrek, is, Shrek, like, debated with Donkey about the presidential election. That was a Oh, thing. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, there's but, a uh, V-log on, on, on DreamWorks' his official YouTube of Shrek uh, arguing with Donkey about politics, like, fake fairy tale politics <laughs> look at his stance on elf insurance i love elves <laughs> he wants everyone to pay for elf insurance i'm not an elf why should i waste my money on elf insurance so you're saying you're more of a pinocchio guy no i can't vote for a puppet i'm leaning to the left i'm leaning to the right who's pulling my strings 
I don't know. Ah, and neither do we. But uh, what I'm saying is home, uh, dragons. Let's see here. I know, but those are recent uh, movies, and this is spirit, like yeah. a movie nobody cared about. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, but, uh, uh, well, I'm, what I'm saying is that, like, it's very clear that DreamWorks has written, like, a, a agreement with Netflix to produce series mm-hmm. off their properties. And for some reason, Voltron. Yeah. Which is really good. Um, so I... I I'm assuming that right now they have the boy thing down pretty well mm-hmm. with uh, their set of shows, and they're probably looking at what they can do to uh, bring yeah. female entertainment. I mean, they'll probably like not even make a He-Man cartoon. They'll probably make like a She-Ra cartoon or something. But like, why Spirit? Like, it's fucking. Sp- this movie came out in 2002. Nobody's cared about this. It doesn't this thing. matter. Man, <laughs> horses. That's it. Horses. Well, it's just That's all like, you need. Horses. Such a random thing to bring back and ma- just they, bastardize. They, they, they... They see how much money My Little Pony's making, and they go, let's do it. Oh, I guess so. I, no, I don't even think it's My Little Pony. There's a few horror shows that are on, like, cable television. Or uh, what's, what's, what is it when you – local local television? Uh, um, I, I've seen yeah. a few. I've Public seen, like, access. a really awkward one. What's that? Oh, my God. What was that weird movie that we watched at the convention with Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> that we Pony riffed Princess. on. Yeah. yeah, Pony Princess or something. It, it's, oh, like, God, this God. really crappy, like – movie <laughs> that's reminded me when you dragged jim to that pony convention he was just like he was just an old man it was fun <laughs> just just what the fuck is happening i mean jim hasn't been in a convention in forever and you just warped his mind <laughs> he he handled it pretty now, well. it was pretty good he did a good now job that he has a daughter he can show he can show her my little pony and he can just be like your your friend your friend, um, your uncle Saber was uh, in a Gordy documentary. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! And then, like, and then, you mean my goddaughter alone? I I have a um I have a um young cousin, and I I thought for for like shits and giggles I would tell her what bronies were as a joke, mm-hmm. and she was really weirded out. And then I completely forgot I did that. And then months later, I call her just to check up on her and see how she's doing. And she says, by the way, Nolan, are you still in that My Little Brony Club? Oh. And, and, I, and I just said it backfired. It completely backfired. I, I <laughs> oh. Wait, Saber, th- does your does your niece know what bronies are? No. Or is she not old enough yet? She's like five, dude. The, the, yeah, let's, these let, are normies. Let her be innocent. They don't know these things yet. They're normies. The, kids are just normies. <laughs> Did you fucking call a little kid a normie? Basically, they don't know this stuff. They're not educated. You know, like sometimes I see like a little kid having like a Spider-Man birthday, and I'm like, you never see the Spider-Man cartoon. This, like, what? <laughs> Get out of here. Name your top five favorite playing Spider-Man on the playground. I mean, it's like they they get this generic Spider-Man comic book art, and it's like, oh yeah, which 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 uh. Uh, interpretation of Spider-Man is this? You didn't even get one based off one of the movies or the cartoon series. You're, Get out of here! You're you're gatekeeping you know, them when they're five years old. <laughs> basically, just getting out. I gotta you know brush through all the uh, you know the the fake geek kids or whatever. You know you gotta test them early. I feel like I feel like Pan instead of being a school shooter would just walk into a school and start like going into the classrooms yelling, "You guys are a bunch of normies." <laughs> It's like, name and, three Spider-Man villains that weren't in one of the movies. You can't. You just can't. Raven. <laughs> Raven. Uh, Mysterio and the Scorpion. Kill yourself. Fuck. Holy shit. Hey, Scorp- no, wait. Uh, uh, no, wait. Scorpion wasn't in any movie. <laughs> shit. I can't believe Pan's an elitist. Oh. Hipster elitist. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems weird. What like... issue was the Super Batman in? <laughs> Like, okay, I lied. I'd never read comics. I just watched the cartoons and movies. I'm sorry. It was all I'm abroad. The same way. Can kill yourself. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. But hey, speaking of killing ourselves, uh, who's excited for the next bit of news? Uh, Tom and Jerry are back in a new straight to video film, and it's called Tom and Jerry and the Chocolate Factory. It's a fucking remake of the of the classic Tim Burton movie with t- with uh, Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry will go on the journey of a lifetime. I'm Tuffy and Oompa Loompa. Feast your eyes on the chocolate room. There is no life I know to compare with your imagination. Tom and Jerry, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Look for it on digital HD and DVD. 
Classic Tim Burton. Movie. You didn't just say that. Fuck. How dare, how dare you? <laughs> Gene Wilder just died. So, <laughs> Again. His body is still warm. So for the sake of clarification, basically what this is is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory remade and shitty modern looking Hanna Barbera animation and they just stick yeah. commentary in the background. Yeah, like it's literally the same movie. There's a trailer out for it now. It's literally the same movie as the Gene Wilder movie. Like, like they have sa- similar shot for shot sequences and stuff, and like they use quotes from the movie. And it's like, what's the point? Just adding Tom and Jerry to it. <laughs> They're in the background. What's the point of this? I I really hate how like classic cartoons like Tom and Jerry have just sort of they don't they don't know what to do with them, so they just, like, put them into, into anything, and, like, this'll sell. Although, I'm surprised okay. they did not do a Tom and Jerry meet Wrestlemania. <laughs> oh, so, no, so don't give them ideas. It's gonna happen. I was having a conversation with someone, I won't specify in case they somehow listen to this podcast, I don't think you do, but like, they'll figure out by the dialogue I'm about to say. But, yeah, I was, I was talking to one of my bosses that's behind um, Yo Mama, and for the first time, it was like, they, they, they always pitch themselves as uh, part of us, the artists, part of the content creators, you know, uh, making the product that, you know, that that's worthy to make. And I know it's your mama jokes and anime, not the, not the most, you know, celebrated things in the world. And so I, 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 t- I was in the meeting and I go, I just found out about this Tom and Jerry movie. And I'm like, oh, look what they're doing now. And he's like, that's awesome. And I'm like, What? <laughs> I, there was a human being <laughs> that I've interacted with that was like, it's a genius idea. You take two properties, put them together. And I'm like, he's an executive. He's the one with the money. He's, oh. he's one of them. He's on the other side. A normie. <laughs> Normies go home. Death to the normies. <laughs> it makes me so sad because Tom and Jerry is my favorite like classic cartoon. Kill all normies. It, it makes me sad to what Tom and Jerry has become. Yeah, it's like I don't know because I'm wondering like, are kids today do they do they know about Hanna Barbera and all the Flintstones and Jetsons and stuff? Like I grew up with Cartoon Network just playing that stuff on loop and whatever, but I don't know if kids today would know. No, I, I crossing them over with wrestling stars, they will know. The Jetsons movie was on Netflix. I think it's still there. <laughs> and I, have you seen that? The WrestleMania it, is one? That, is that the one? No, 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 no. The, is that the, the one from 1990? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh, one. yeah, the one that's yeah. super fucking 90s. It's so... It, it's painful how 90s it is. Ooh, and yeah. uh, I, f- I forget the name of the, the daughter, Judy. I think yeah. that's her name. Yeah. One of the worst characters of all time. <laughs> Just the, 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 the most generic teenage girl character you could ever ask for <laughs> my life's over because this alien boyfriend stood up my let's go to the mall and it's it's <laughs> it's, it's awful and there's but the thing is that there's a scene in the movie i, I saw because it, it somebody like uh cartoon brew posted a image of it or a video clip of it which made me want to watch the movie and there's like a psychedelic scene where like judy and her alien boyfriend sing about being in love even though they just met a minute ago <laughs> and and it's it's stupendous like it's great animation it's like what, where the hell did this come from <laughs> I no, but it goes right back to it um the best part of that movie is i think it was the father um the voice actor of the father recorded his lines and then he died oh, <laughs> well, it was, really it was bad script. yeah I, I believe i believe it was the jetsons movie correct from the 90s yeah yeah talking about yeah i i think one trivia behind it was that the father character, the, the voice actor behind him? Yeah, he recorded his lines, and I think he died in the booth. I'm not entirely sure. Oh my <laughs> god! That was, his final, that was his final role. He died. Jesus he Christ, died. Nolan! And, if it was in the booth, it would say something about like tributed to him or something, or in the in, in honor. Jesus, I don't think that's happened. <laughs> Oh. Rip George Jetson. <laughs> <laughs> but, so Pan, the thing, the thing. Oh is, yeah, he, he, yeah, that checks out. It does. <laughs> it, 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 he oh. he died. Oh from a my stroke. god! Rip George Jetson. <laughs> Jane, his wife, crying in the booth. How <laughs> <laughs> right, the oh, orphan? Right after he finished recording. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Get me out of this crazy thing. <laughs> I'm still alive. Get me out of the coffin. <laughs> Oh, George is dead, George. George. <laughs> Jetson, if you're not here, you're f- oh, he's dead. No. <laughs> this is terrible. 
we're, we're belittling this poor man's death after he gave it his all in the recording. I don't want to say he gave it his all. Do you, okay, how do you, you think know. they uh, handle? How do you think they handle death in uh, the Chenson's world? Do they like just drop the uh, body off the edge? <laughs> no, I know. I know exactly what they do. Okay, so they they lower their little floating castle thing. <laughs> To the ground, and they kick it off for the cavemen to eat. So. <laughs> Barney, it's that guy we met that one time. <laughs> it's so a human flesh. <laughs> uh-huh. Looks like we made it on top this time. <laughs> well, according to the Wikipedia, it's like the last thing Jetsons oriented until the wrestling revived it. Like oh it was, one, I think that's what they did. They're like, all right, we're done. He died. <laughs> we'll respect him. This is it. He's back, and with wrestling. Although John Cena was not in the uh, WrestleMania f- meets the Jetsons. Yeah, and Undertaker. He was saying for the best one. Oh. oh, he was in the movie? He was in um, the Scooby-Doo one. Oh, okay. So they didn't, they, John Cena was not in the WrestleMania. What's the point? In, in uh, the Flintstone. I mean, the Jetsons. Yeah, they had the... Uh, God, how do I know these fucking wrestler names? Because Big you show. watched all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because well, Undertaker recently uh, retired, mm-hmm. which must be really nice to retire from wrestling. It's like, wow, man, you wow, good job, dude. Yeah. You 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 earned it. But the uh, George Jetson stuff, I guess, what gets me is when I was watching the movie, like you'll never forget his name because he constantly says, "I George Jetson will do this," or "I'm George Jetson," and it's it's really bizarre because he says that at least like. <laughs> Seven times in the movie where he has to like declare to the world his name before <laughs> saying or doing anything. Look, I don't know. It, man, it, look, if your last name was Jetson, you'd be proud of it because that sounds so futuristic. But also, I think how they would also like, you know, get rid of the dead bodies in the future is like, you know how the car <laughs> sh- uh, folds up into like a little little suitcase i think that they do that with people like they put they make a full-size coffin put a body in there and it folds up and then just pour put it on like a pyramid or something oh god you hear the bones cracking <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. They, 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 they burn the ashes. You know, they burn the bodies in the ashes. They put them in a little space car, and they shoot it off into space like Spock. But you hear, <laughs> as it floats away. Oh. I was going to make a Spock reference. Fuck you. <laughs> or, uh, like no, they 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 uh, incinerate them, and they just have, it's just a pile of ashes. And Rosie, one of the little robots, just like scoops it all up and just takes no, it away. Like, and, no, the fucking little boy um, and the dad are like separated by this glass wall, and the dad says, "I, George Jetson, believe that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few." And then his son fucking watches him die. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, you, you did do your fact checking. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I read earlier. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. It, it, let me read this out loud. <laughs> Izzy posted this. Hanlon died, the, the voice actor for the uh, George Jetson says, died of a second stroke on February 11th, 1989. Oh, my God. He didn't even live to see The Simpsons while recording dialogue for the Jetsons movie. According to Andrea Romero, who was Hanna-Barbera's casting director at the time, oh, Hanlon found it difficult to read and hear and in the end, he died in the recording studio doing what he loved. That sounds like bad work conditions. God I'm damn. All right, everybody, your- I, everybody, we need a moment of silence for O'Hanlon. <laughs> Jesus. Jetsons. It's the Jetsons. The <laughs> just, just smash cut a bunch of, like, I'm George Jetson. I'm George Jetson. <laughs> <laughs> is it too soon to make these jokes? Oh no! It happened like nearly he did what? He, Twenty nine years ago? The year so after it I was happened over thirty years he ago. He died in nineteen eighty nine. He didn't even get to see Batman eighty nine, possibly, or Batman well, sixty nine. Anybody, anybody who ever cared about O'Hanlon probably is either senile or dead. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sure someone working at Cartoon Network that's still carried over from Hanna Barbera still remembers him. Oh, are you watching this? Oh, are you watching this right now? Someone watching this. this shitty podcast filled with a bunch of fucking degenerates in one in a couple of weeks. Oh. Wow. So they had a they just they respectfully respectfully decided not to make any Jetson stuff until WrestleMania. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. 
No, 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 you're, you, you, you're, you're incorrect, because there absolutely was an episode of Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, where oh. George Jetson showed up. Oh, like, where from? You're a barely <laughs> 2002, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> this calendar. <laughs> that's not, that's not like a... It's like, when I was looking at the, the cast here, Mel Blanc, like one of the most famous voice actors ever, was in this movie, and he also died the same year this movie came out. This movie's cursed. God, guys, this is bad. <laughs> he died that should, should, should we start making fun of Mel Blanc now? <laughs> oh. No, there's, a, okay, okay. there's a really cool no, there's a really cool fact I like about Mel Blanc. He w- went into a fucking coma for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe he fucking, uh, I can't think of a funny joke. Anyway, he was in a coma, and they were trying to get responses from him. And somebody got the bright fucking idea to be like, hey, why don't we try talking to him as Bugs Bunny? And they were like, okay. So they do it, and he actually responded as Bugs Bunny. This is a real fact. This yeah. is something that happened to Bill Blanc. Motherfucker was in a coma, and they were like, let's talk like Bugs Bunny. Let's talk wow. to him as Bugs Bunny. And he responded. Wow, that, that snapped him out of it. I think if I'm ever in a coma, just talk to me and refer to me as Emily or Stephanie or whatever. <laughs> Maybe I'd come out of a coma. No, if, oh, if but... Ant's ever in a coma, we'll bring like a hot girl to insult him. Oh my god! Oh my god. No, I wouldn't respond. But you'd just see my comatose body get a boner. Oh, I was <laughs> gonna do a quick correction. Like Mel Blanc didn't die when the movie came out. It was died. He died uh, after production. Damn. Oh, thank so god. So it was eighty nine when he died. Wow. Well, something I wanted to say to respond to Pants saying, "Would kids recognize these characters?" And I and I don't think you realize what the, this particular movie is marketed towards. Yes, it's marketed towards kids, but it's obviously clearly marketed towards the adults that had kids that are young enough to be like, "Oh man, I used to watch this." Yeah. Hey, and then they put it in front of it. Like that's the target demographic. Basically, yeah, it's rec- it's a brand. It's recognizable. But on top of that, it has, you know, wrestling attached to it, which is something popular amongst younger kids. So it's, it's kind of like an easy sell to be like, I don't know if I really want to watch your old cartoon. Oh, but John Cena's in this? I'm down. Yeah. Sign me up. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you guys watched my my WrestleMania video, but the, the Flintstones had a pretty funny gag in it where... So there's John Cena's in it, John Cena Stone. Hmm. He works at the quarry with Fred, and Fred's trying to recruit wrestlers for his little wrestling association so he goes to try to recruit john cena stone and he walks up because john you know i want you to be a wrestler and john's like no mr flintstone i don't want to work here for the rest of my life and fred goes uh, everyone thinks that kid everyone thinks that and then he goes from smiling to looking super depressed <laughs> and they start playing a <laughs> and then it got and then it was quiet for like five seconds of like just Fred looking just completely depressed and John Cena eventually looking at the camera, I guess. And then he snaps out of it. And it's like, holy hell, they just made like a like you just wasted your life kind of joke. And, and a WrestleMania fun stones. It's great. Fred never achieved anything. It's so sad. Fuck you, Fred. Yeah, the hot life, I guess, kind of. I mean, I there's know. also, but for Tom and Jerry crossovers, there was also Tom and Jerry go to the Wizard of Oz, and also there was a Johnny Quest. They, they brought back Johnny Quest to cross over with uh, uh, Tom and Jerry. What? Yeah, that what? happened. What? That Johnny what? Quest? Yeah, Johnny yeah, Quest. How are you people just now hearing about this? Like, I, didn't, I didn't hear about is, it until people were... Willy Wonka? Why is Willy Wonka the thing? Is like all of a sudden people care about these Because Gene Wilder's like, corpse is still warm, and they already made this yes. movie. <laughs> you should me. That, wow. Is there, there it like is. A, at the end of this movie? Like, is there going to be a tribute that says for Gene? I I doubt it. Oh, but if they do, I, I'd be they're like that would be just a spit in the face, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Tim Burton's career. <laughs> Man, a bunch of like, uh, like there's got Haji and Johnny and and Tom wearing like, <laughs> like jetpacks. <laughs> oh, oh. Speaking of uh, uh, remakes, nobody asked for. Um, did you guys know there was a sequel to Big Fat Liar that came out last year? I, I, I did. <laughs> The only, reason, the only reason I know that is because somebody I follow posted a video about it. Yeah, there's yeah. a fucking tra- I I'll link it below, but there's a fucking trailer to this Big Fat Liar sequel called Bigger Fatter Liar. Except um, it's not even a sequel. It's pretty much a direct remake just with the name slapped on and it's straight to video. And it looks like crap and they got nobody notable. Like there's no Frankie Muniz or anybody. So it's just some random kid doing the same movie over. 
Wow. They just did not care. <laughs> oh. Uh, jumping back to the Tom and Jerry thing, like, um, I've seen clips from The Wizard of Oz, and, like, they literally, there's some scenes, they're just the exact same scene from the original movie, just Tom and Jerry happen to be in the background. Not doing anything, just happen <laughs> to be in the background. <laughs> just participating. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, and then the best part is each one of these movies, in the trailer and on the box, it has original movie slapped onto it technically it is i mean the original the <laughs> wizard of oz never had the Tom original wasn't animated yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's it's a really funny notion to be like original movie except for it's literally taking a different movie and just adding their characters well, to it that does, that's not what that's original awful. movie means when they post it it means it's a new completely separate movie i guess or whatever it means i don't know it did every movie's original movie technically yeah that's stupid. Yeah, that is every movie's an original movie. <laughs> what the hell? If we're gonna go by that standard. And you know, like this isn't them just like throwing like spaghetti against the wall and seeing what it works. Because clearly it does, because not only is there was there Oz, but there's back to Oz. It was originally gonna be called Return to Oz, but Disney owns the rights to that, so Uh-oh. they had to change it to Back to Oz. <laughs> yeah, they can't do back to Oz. I don't think kids are ready for that one. No, they did it. It was last year's movie. Okay, I mean, Return to Oz. They can't make a remake of that with Tom and Jerry. That's too scary. Oh, that would be terrifying. Oh, God. Oh, it's better than them having their old mammy characters like, Tom, I told you to get out of this kitchen. <laughs> and <laughs> super old school racism. God, okay, we got to bring back racist Tom and Jerry. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, let's do that. That'd Come be on. fun. You know, that's like a whole new bold direction they could take for the series. You know, like we're, say, hey, we're bringing back racism. You know, it's the new era. <laughs> Got a new president. Like, we can do this. It's like, I think it's more acceptable now, you know? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, heck, uh, they got Mike Pence in the Johnny Quest thing, so. Why not? Oh, 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 my God, you're right. Oh, wait, Race <laughs> Venture. Cause, like <laughs> oh, because people think Race Venture looks like Mike Pence. Whoops. Wait, we're not Race Venture. No, fuck. How does it Race Venture? What's the guy? <laughs> Crap. Race Venture is my new favorite character. <laughs> wait, wait. Race Quest. Race Quest. I don't think I don't think he was related. I thought Race was just his own guy. Just He's some guy that guy. he had hanging around. That I, no one. Yeah, knows. What's the deal that. with Johnny Quest? It's like it's like a little kid, his Indian friend, uh, a dad, <laughs> a bodyguard. I think there's Johnny Quest, Doctor Benton C. Quest, his father, uh, Roger T. Race Bannon. So it's Race Bannon. Okay, and then Hodge, and then Hodge doesn't even have a last name. It's Hodge. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just like the dog Bandit, who has not a last name right there. That sucks. <laughs> so they're saying that Indians are like dogs. Oh. <laughs> Awful. No, no, they gotta do what? Um, what's that stupid pilot I hate? Uh, uh, riding with Burgess. The the Cartoon Network pilots just have like a Mexican stereotype friend, and he's just like, oh, Joe me will be tacos or something. Just, you might as well have that in the group. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, yeah, fuck. But yeah, I I, I confused R- Race Bannon with no Race. Crap, what is his name? Race. Race Bannon. You're right. Race, Race Bannon. Bannon. Yeah, you got it right. Okay, first time. Race Not Bannon with a, one of the Venture Brothers. Was there a Race Venture? There, there's a uh, there's Brock who's the uh, I know, bodyguard. I know. Brock Samson. But, well, okay. Right. See, my favorite thing about Venture yeah. Brothers is that in the early seasons they have parodies. Uh, you know, they they didn't think they can use the Johnny Quest characters. So they have parodies, and then they were like, "Oh, Johnny Quest is owned by Warner Brothers, and we're we're working with Cartoon Network, so we're allowed to use those characters." So there's both parodies of it and the actual characters <laughs> in that universe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like a weird show like Venture <laughs> Brothers. It's it's not over yet. Like I think they're still waiting for another yeah, season. They they you know they they make like six episodes and they disappear for like three years and they come back. You know that's really bizarre. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, I think the first like three seasons they were pretty consistent, and then um, I mean the thing is the show's got all quality except I mean like I don't really care for the fourth season personally, but like half the fourth season. But uh, for the most part, it's one of the most well-written shows on TV, and it's mostly yeah. written by, like, two people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And so. that's what happens. It's like they – the show – I mean, like, Adult Swim doesn't have a huge budget for their TV shows. So, like, they, they do everything themselves and then hire out, like, a casual person here and there. Um, so it makes sense. And I'm okay with waiting a little bit for such good quality. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel like the same thing is going to be uh, happening with Rick and Morty, since like yeah. Rick and Morty is mostly by, by, uh, written by two people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Pretty much, yeah. It's kind of because only Adult Swim would ever let this happen, where it's just basically two people, and they say, "Uh, yeah, you don't get you get you get more time to work on all this stuff," you know? Because I think Adult Swim basically lives off just reruns. Because what else is there to watch at like two, one a.m.? Nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, like, there's a couple shows that, like, remember um, Two and a Half Men? Mm -hmm. Like, when that whole Charlie Sheen thing happened? Mm -hmm. They were literally like, hey, we make so much money off syndication that we might actually make more money by not producing new episodes. Weird. Hmm. Well, that was a really popular show, too. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with Big Bang Theory. If they just canceled it, they could probably, they would still be regging it in just by having reruns. I mean, it happened with Seinfeld. Yeah, that's the episode. That's the uh, fifty-two episode rule uh, that Disney. Well, a lot of cartoons had a, a while back, where they said, "Hey, let's make fifty-two episodes and then cancel it, and then we can air yeah. a, a rerun once a week for a whole year, and that'll keep things fresh." Mm-hmm. Well, what's weird about uh, Disney, though, and my favorite thing is like Ducktales. I'm pretty sure aired like two sets of episodes uh, per like uh, two different channels, and one channel got Bubba Duck. And the other channel got Gizmo Duck, but they do not exist in the same episode ever. What? No, the, 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 like in DuckTales, it, if the episode has Bubba Duck, the cave duck, it does not feature Gizmo Duck. But if it, but if Gizmo Duck's in it, Bubba Duck's missing. Why? I don't know. They just don't exist in the same universe. <laughs> like it, it, it clearly there was two timelines. <laughs> There's parallel universes in the DuckTales franchise. <laughs> yeah. But I don't you, know my DuckTales lore. No. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> but you guys want to get into the questions? Let's do it. Yep. Pretty disgusting. Now on 32X, it makes me sweat. Welcome to the world of doom. A hellish nightmare for the more real, the more intense world of Genesis 32X. It takes my mind off work. Just one of the astounding new games for the machine six times more powerful than 3DO. Back up! Hey, we have the Fan Junk playlist. If anybody has any videos related to Rebel Taxi or the podcast, email them to me at rebeltaxi.yahoo.com. And we also have the Fan Reddit and the Fan DeviantArt in the description. And also, the next video is going to be uh, top 10 animated food, stuff like the Nako, uh, the Krabby Patty, things like that. And questions! If anybody has a question, be sure to post your question in the comments of this YouTube video below and start out with the word question so it's easier to find. And our first question is, nerdism is nerds in the room. Question, what are your guys' thoughts on Doom on a Doom reboot movie due to the success of the Doom reboot game? Should they do it? You know what would be well, awesome? What? If they did it like Hardcore Henry. Yeah. Oh, man. That would be be awesome. (laughs) Like a no no holds barred, just kick-ass hero who, like, don't don't even give me a reason for, like, a story. Just a a guy who wants to fuck up demons. That's That's it. That's basically the game, the newest game. I want that, though. Give me a movie, though, of, like, maybe some side characters who are, like, who are, like, there's, like, B story of... Of like the, you know, we gotta do this to save Mars and shit. And then A story is the guy who's going like, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna fuck up demons. That's it. Yeah. Or or no, or better yet, a subversion. There's a beast story, but then the Doom guy just comes in and kills them, and then <laughs> would that be fantastic? I love that shit. That'd be hilarious. You know, like kind of like um Beavis and Butthead do America, where it's essentially them just walking into someone else's movie, a sort of. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, <clears throat> the, on the mention of a video game movie reboot, they're doing a uh, Tomb Raider in the style of the new games. Mm-hmm. Really? So, yeah, uh, there's an Oscar winning. I think it, it's either an Oscar nominated actress or an Oscar winning actress. Let me take a look. Mm-hmm. Or an actor named Oscar. <laughs> yes. Um, Alicia Vikander. They have pictures of it. Hold on. She just looks like a cosplayer. It's oh, funny. do you guys remember the 2005 Doom movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Yeah. yeah. Was that 2005? I think 2005, six around there. I thought it was earlier than that. So, I don't know. Mid 2000s. But that movie was awful. And also it came out at the time when Doom 3 came out. And I I hated I hate the fact that they made it at that time because like Doom 3 wasn't trying to be like the old Doom. It was just like this sort of more. Yeah, it was like a corridor shooter. Yeah, slower, more horror based. And this movie was nothing but like a Predators. I mean, yeah, Predator, Alien ripoff and... 
you know, it wasn't like a crazy, like what I want from a Doom movie is just like a huge power fantasy. And this was just like a regular, I don't know, alien ripoff. Well, the yeah. best thing about the Doom 3 game mm-hmm. was the fact that they have the technology to bring people to Mars, open dimensions, but not be able to tape a flashlight to a gun. Look, tape, you, no one had tape on the on them, you know? No, who would have? There's it? no tape on an entire space station who, involving you, construction. I'm not gonna go on a fucking Mars, go to fucking Mars and think, yeah, I should bring tape along. You know, I think like better bring water, not so much tape. Not a single person has tape. You have an atomic bomb in your bag. If anybody's gonna have tape, it's you. I have to do everything. You are wasting a lot of time. <laughs> I mean, to to be fair, Rocket Raccoon didn't bring tape in that Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. <laughs> like, he can only hold so many things in his inventory, like either a nuclear accelerator or tape. I'm picking the nuclear accelerator. I don't know what that does, but it could be useful. I was about to ask you, what does that, what does that do? Like, <laughs> what uses that? So that sounds like something he'd carry. I don't know. The, the, the Ghostbusters had an uh, unlicensed nuclear accelerator. Also, one of the big problems with the Join the Rock Johnson Doom movie is that it never felt like a Doom movie. They weren't even fighting demons. They were fighting zombies, basically. And also, they... And, I mean, it was on Mars. But other than, like, two scenes where they look out a window, you would never guess this movie took place on Mars. It just looks like some generic facility on Earth. Hmm. I think a Doom movie would be cool if it was first person and it was just one big power fantasy and not yeah. just some... Just, just make it hardcore, like Hardcore Henry and you have the perfect Doom movie. Yeah. But uh, um, on the subject of Doom, real quick, Super Bunny Hop, who's amazing, I love him. George, please be on the podcast, please. Uh, Super Bunny Hop. Oh everybody, yeah. Everybody asked. Didn't he do a video on like um like, on Mega Man Legends and why it didn't hold up? Because I very much agreed with that video. Um, I'm not entirely sure, Maybe? but <clears throat> my subject. He did a video on video game novel adaptations, which is about as terrible as it sounds. And apparently. Oh, God. The Doom novelization was the best one because it was a super fucking crazy, I think, Scientology what? Uh, advertisement. <laughs> what? Well, that it, makes about I, as much sense. This is, this is off the cuff from my memory, but it was really bizarre. And he also did a Metal Gear Solid adaptation. He also covered a Metal Gear Solid adaptation, which had a lot of like cheesy one-liners where Snake would go, Hey, it's Christmas. He snaps the guy's neck. Christmas came early this year, which makes no <laughs> sense. Did he, did he ejaculate when he snapped his neck? Uh, no. What? I'm guessing that's what it meant. Like if if he's Christmas and he came early this year, I guess. He... I probably just I probably just misremembered and butchered it. But it was it, go watch um Super Bunny Hop's um game adaptations. Okay. I mean game novels, and it's really funny, and he's amazing. Next question. Uh, Manzo says, question, Pan, what is your favorite suicide girl? You all know I could never pick a favorite, you know? Next question. Yeah. Um... Do you even know any suicide girls by name? Look, the one with blue hair, she's pretty fine. Um... <laughs> no, I know I know one. She, she has black hair with purple highlights. She wears a tank top. She has black short shorts. That's me, <laughs> you fuck. Yeah, you're a suicide Oh my god, you're right. Holy shit, but I'm not getting any money. What the fuck? Because nobody wants your ugly ass. Oh. Don't worry, Stephanie. You can be a suicide girl, too. Hey, you guys You guys should live up to the name of suicide girl and kill yourselves. Fucking rude. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. I, like, uh, I was talking with... Well, I was talking with Zoe about this a long time ago, but we were kind of hoping, like, eventually they'll make, like, suicide boys or something, you know? Starring Samurai Jack. Too soon. <laughs> There's something similar, but I forgot what it was called. Well, thanks for nothing. Crap. Damn. Kamikaze guys. Yeah, that'd be cool. They're all Asian. <laughs> wow. Too soon. Any next? Hey, next question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. <clears throat> All right. We didn't talk about Spark, a space story. Who cares trailer. about Spark, a space story? Nobody saw that movie. You listed it as the thing. It's like, who cares, honestly? Spark. Okay, there's this theatrical movie that was supposed to come out. Uh, no, it did come out. It's called Spark, a space story, a CG animated kids movie. It looks like Journey of the West, basically the thing Dragon Ball is based on. But um, it's with it's CG animated and, it, and it's in space. I don't know. It, yeah, it just looks like Journey to the West. Yeah, it That's literally just came out it with 
little advertising and it's just like, oh, that's out in theaters and nobody saw it. Anyone see it? Nope. I don't think my theater is playing it, even though they show trailers of it. Great. Well, at least that came out unlike um, underdogs or anything the Weinstein get their hands on. Yeah, so that that's all we have to say about a spark journey to the west. <laughs> it's just you put it on the agenda, so I'm like, oh hey, we forgot to talk about that. Yeah. Well, I guess there was. Uh oh, my finger stuck. Uh, okay. Anyway. What the fuck are you doing with your finger? Shh. Oh, I had a bottle in my hand, and I I don't know. Sometimes I stick my fingers in the bottle, and it gets stuck, and I'm and I get into panic mode, but I get it out, so it's okay. <laughs> anyway. The extra says, question, how did you guys think of the Welcome to My Life short on Cartoon Network? And do you think it has good staying power as opposed to just being in the right place at the right time or just a good show? Do you think it should be a good sh- a show? You, you um, no. The what short? Uh, there's, Cartoon really Network good. released this, uh, this, I, I, this short online um, called Welcome to My Life. I'll link it below. But basically it's about this uh, monster, this dinosaur-looking kid. And it's like a, a fake mock documentary, a mockumentary about his life and what's it like to be a monster in high school. And it's it, it's super mellow. I really love it, but I don't know if it I don't know if it'll work at a show. Uh, my name's my name is Douglas, but my friend Brian and my, all my friends usually call me T Cash. Where does the T Cash come from? It's kind of like a rap name that. I came up with. <laughs> Is it common for monsters to have Japanese names? I mean, it seems like Japanese monsters are pretty common to like cinema, but <laughs> I don't know if like regular, you know, people would know like, oh, that's like a normal thing. No, I don't think it was intended to be a show. <laughs> like, it, it's not like it's not like pitched as a pilot. I mean, I guess. It, It'd be really chill. I could I could see it as like a a documentary style show, but I don't know how like it it doesn't have enough to grab it. Like it's just really chill and very relaxing and mm-hmm. heartwarming, but there's not really a a plot. Yeah, I mean I think well, it could work as like looks pretty nice. I think it could work as like well, things Clarence in between did, commercials. Clarence didn't really have a plot either. It was just hey we're going on adventures. It's about the life of a kid. Yeah, but that's a plot. Those, uh, but would kids want to see like a like a doc a fake documentary like this? I don't know. <laughs> that's this, if this has a plot too. It's essentially watch this kid go through his adolescent life. Yeah. It, it's the same plot as Clarence. <laughs> Not real. Well, yeah, different execution. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. The I was same gonna say plot, different execution. You saying it has no plot is ridiculous, but no, but no, like, no, no. Like, there's a huge difference the, between like kids going on adventures. Oh. And then, like, watching someone go through high school where uh, the, the highest conflict is, hey, that guy said I looked like him. I'm going to fight you. Hey, I go- my friend goes to your church. Okay, I won't fight you. Like, <laughs> there's a different level of, like, excitement and uh, character arcs. <laughs> just, just because it's different doesn't mean it's not a plot. I uh, I hope they don't. I hope they there's other stuff they can go after. This this one is, I mean, there's something against slice of life shows like Clarence, which personally I enjoyed. Uh, but I feel like this one, they had an objective. Like, let's talk about this kid. We we'll kind of hint at bull- bullying, maybe. Um, that, that's that's good enough. Not even yeah. bull- It has a lot of racial subtext, too. It, yeah, yeah, it definitely has disguised that. As, disguised as a, a monster is a monsterist. But basically, <laughs> when some, I, like, I like that the person brought up staying power, because... Unless we live in a world where racism is no longer a problem, spoiler, it will always be a problem. Until we have I robot think, bodies. Yeah. Um, Ghost in the Shell. Fuck! My friend, if, if, <laughs> that created a whole new problem! <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, even movies made during the uh, segregation movement, or after, a little bit afterwards when we were starting to become very... We're sorry we did that. Um, those movies still have staying power in that they're an important piece of history and they, they are a chronicle of the time when we were treating people of different races very negatively and it, people tend not to learn from history that much. Boring, hey, this pilot was pretty cool. I'm not finished, asshole. Anyway. So I feel it would have staying power in that it's sort of a modern contemporary take on racism today, you know? Yeah. 
So didn't you want to fuck the dinosaur kid? Oh okay, god, there it no. is. Oh, okay. Everybody, everybody, everybody was like, Nolan, do you want to fuck the dinosaur kid? I was like, no. No. Also, Steven, Steven, though. Steven please stop though. insinuating that I would fuck Lucy loud. <laughs> that is a goddamn lie, and you all know it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. But, I don't know if I know it. But uh, shut up. But anyway, like, <laughs> so yeah, I think maybe like, if anything, I think these shorts could work as like commercial break thingies or something. I don't know if it'll work as a yeah. uh a TV series. I, I don't know. I think it could, but like, uh, I think it would have. I, I, I don't know. Like, I could see it, and I can't. Um, no, I mean, it, it, I, it ain't got. You know, it's it's a good pilot, but it, it ain't no writing with Burgess or anything. You know, it's not a classic I, like that I, one. I think it would actually perform better as like um, a weekly series on like a uh, internet, like watch on your leisure because it's oh, so yeah. calm. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah. I, or maybe they should have but, like, like a Mexican stereotype, like "Oh, Dios mío, mi tacos, mi, uh, mi tacos." <laughs> What's that monster called? Uh, does the monster have a name? Fuck, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> but the, I think the, I think the the big the main character, the monster in the world he lives in, is endearing enough that I can think people getting really like attached to him. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of something that's like remotely close to it. Um, <laughs> kind of like I, I thought, "Hey Arnold" for a moment, but that's not it. No. Um, it's got a chill vibe like Hey Arnold. Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. There's not really anything I can think of. <laughs> no, what it should devolve into is like it starts out as like, you know, just about his life in high school and it slowly becomes like a, a found footage film about how this monster just went off the deep end and so suddenly Godzilla the whole environment or, <laughs> or, or the school itself. Some of you monsters are cool. Don't come to school tomorrow. Oh, I, no. I, I literally just made oh, a tumbler no. like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, imagine if, like, he goes through the school like Godzilla, but it's in slow motion, and he's just eating all the kids. Like, he's fighting them like Godzilla. <laughs> The Japanese kids, like I'm out. I've, I've seen this before. I'm out here. <laughs> oh no! What's the next question? Daddy level hundred. Question: If Nickelodeon is trying to reach out to an older audience, why not make their own late night block of cartoons, i.e., Adult Swim? Hmm. Well, I think what is even on Nick at Night now? Yeah, is it on Nick at Night still? Friends, I guess the George Lopez show. I don't know. Something like that. George Lopez. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think adult, uh, Nickelodeon would ever do that for one thing. Uh, I guess they wanted to keep it, like, safe for kids to watch, you know, because parents would have to worry, like, oh, no, is when they're watching Spongebob, is the next episode just going to be, like, uh, fucking South Park or something? I don't know. But uh, the, the reason why I think Nickelodeon doesn't do that, another reason, is, like, they have Comedy Central that's owned by Viacom. Like, they're both owned by Viacom. So if there's any adult animation, they can just put it on Comedy Central where they know it has an audience for adult animation animation even though nick at night is a is a fucking waste i hate like why don't they just i don't know why don't they just play Sp i rather no never mind i was gonna say why don't they just play spongebob on nick at night it's like never mind we have enough spongebob no you, you, you pretty much nailed it okay well fine one, one last question uh mr jack braid question what do you think about those commercials that run for like eight years straight annoying or can you understand why those ones run all the time is there any commercials you you can think of that he won't stop running. I was thinking recently how Flo, the progressive girl, has stayed so long. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, she's been around for a while. But, but at least they change up the commercials. You know, it's, it's not like a f the fuck... Like recently, Easter was a few days ago, and they were playing that commercial for the Catberry Easter Bunny, and it's like... These, oh, yeah. It's like so obviously a commercial from, that was shot in the 90s, and also if you... And during Christmas, there's that one m and yeah. commercial. Yeah. Okay. They See, well, the thing about that is that that's just um, like it's a little bit of a combination of nostalgia. It's a little bit of conditioning, <laughs> and it's one of those things where, like, especially during holidays, Christmas, Easter, and such, where uh, you have that sense of like just like the good old days. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that puts those people that is a tradition to them. There you go. It's not, also, a, it's not the good old days that they keep playing it every year. At least give it a, like a ten year break. <laughs> Well, some of these ones are like, I feel like they can't really top it. And if you tried to, people get upset, like the Hershey Kisses oh, with yeah. the little like bells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you the can't. Out, it's just too good. It's, it's perfection. You my, my, it. I don't know. I remember I was watching like um, that commercial on TV and my dad says, every fucking year that commercial. <laughs> 
Takes a big old handful of Hershey Kisses. Never eating Hershey's again. <laughs> Remember, uh, crickety clack down the track. It's another crap. No wait. Lots and lots of trays. Lots and lots of trays. Big trays. Big trays. Tray. Tray. Little trays. Yeah, dude. <laughs> God, it, down the track. Uh, if you guys remember when I did my lollipop chainsaw review a, a couple of years back, I made a, a reference to all the all those commercials, and now those commercials don't play anymore. So now that review makes no sense. But, but to be fair, it was a pretty sh- it was pretty shitty review to begin with. We don't talk about those videos. Do you guys remember Girls Gone Wild? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although that series is uh, dead. I'm, I'm, I miss that. I miss that so much. Yeah. It, it, not even for not even for dirty reasons. I just remember. What midnight, one in the morning, just kind of scrolling through. Animal like, oh, crackers there, there in my is. soup. <laughs> You're duck can lay an egg. Oh, what's so special about that? Can you lay an egg? Bitch. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. Did they just release a new Jackie Chan Adventures uh, oh, trailer? Oh, oh my god. Okay, so terrible okay. news. Like it sounds exciting, but it's actually fucking awful news. Cause like they um Jackie Chan made a new cartoon series called Jackie Chan Adventures something something and you think it had something to do with that tv show from a yeah. couple years ago but no it has nothing to do with that it is about these like three kids and i think one of them's like jackie chan as a child and they go on cg animated adventures and they're in tron suit what? and it looks like fucking shit why jackie chan adventures oh. is, like, is like an anomaly <laughs> so great and they just ruined mm-hmm. it they ruined this anomaly and just made like some generic kids action cartoon I'll, yeah, I'll, link, I'll put a trailer that. below, but it looks like utter garbage. Okay. Oh, I, how did you not put this in the news? We have to talk about Reboot. Reboot? Oh, oh shit. shit. Reboot is back. I am is so it? mad about that. Oh, okay, my so, God. You're all fucked. Reboot. Well, tell us about Reboot shit. Okay. So, originally, Reboot was the first CGI TV show. It was about these video game sprites living in a computer. And whenever the, the person playing the computer played a game, a GameCube would appear. <laughs> and the sprites would have to beat the user. Otherwise, they became little slug things. It was fantastic. The whole title was it. called... It's one of my favorite cartoons. When the sprites got put in the game, they had to reboot um, and become characters in that. So, there was a bunch of Zelda parodies. Uh, Mortal Kombat parodies. The Mortal Kombat one was the most like epic one because the character almost died, uh, <laughs> but it was awesome. And then you're like, they're gonna reboot, reboot. Finally, that makes sense. And you find out that it's a Sentai-ish styled half live action, half CGI thing about some teenagers becoming the new Guardians, and none of the original characters except for Megabyte is coming back. And, and that is such an insult because Tony J is dead. No, oh, and yeah. he was he was the best voice for that villain, and Not everyone could be like the Jetsons and retire their show <laughs> until the, the rest the, of them come. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, We're coming full circle. Um, but for for Megabyte, the, if you ever saw the series, like it ended on a cliffhanger where Megabyte took over, hmm. and they just never got renewed. Damn, and so, now it's yeah. fucked. So now we're never going to get that satisfying conclusion. Nope. Like Samurai Jack is getting. <laughs> and by the way, like Reboot was just great. Like, uh, they, okay, for, for example, they, they got rid of their main character after the first season. They like threw him into the internet. Yeah. And then when they brought him back, they changed his voice actor because they couldn't get him. And then randomly they have they found a backup file that was actually a villain pretending to be. But now we have two Bobs and the backup file has the original voice actor back. So, like, there's a joke where it's like, I don't know if you're the real Bob, Bob. The other guy actually sounds more like Bob than you. Like, it, it's so clever <laughs> yes, and meta. Right. And it, it's so good. <laughs> Reboot is a great show. If you haven't seen it, watch it. So, isn't it so now the new one's live action partially? Partially live action, partially CGI. It, it's really just – it's just Sentai. It's like Digi Rangers or something. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like um, Super – human sa- cyber samurai or whatever it's super uh what was it superhuman no no it, it was ca- superhuman samurai cyber squad it kind of yeah, looks like, like the yeah. code lyoko evolution you know the live action code lyoko thing so now we have to like wait and see what which will suck harder the jackie chan adventures reboot or the reboot reboot because <laughs> they've been talking about this reboot reboot forever and now it's coming out and it's like oh this sucks. The reboot reboot stings, but like I'm it actually does. depressed about Jackie Chan Adventures though. Jackie's dying. It's it's, it's clearly a a cash you know deposit or withdrawal from the, for the title, you know, and I think it looks to be more of a, a aimed at just the Chinese audience than American. Yeah. Because I I'll watch the trailer, it's like oh this is 
It seems very Chinese, which makes sense with Jackie Chan. So I mean, I this is something that they'll dump on like 6 a.m. on Cartoon Network, possibly. No, on Disney XD. <laughs> that, it, it won't make it to a Cartoon honest. Network. It's a shame. The, the original Jackie Chan was like unreasonably good. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I enjoyed the it's, heck out of it. It's more good than it needed to be. It was a. It was literally a uh, celebrity cash in, you know, TV show like uh, the Chuck Norris or Mr. T cartoon yeah. but instead like it had heart soul the adventures are actually good and the only mess up they had was they um they apparently made filler episodes and story episodes for season two but accidentally aired all the story episodes all at once and originally <laughs> they were going to like intermingle them so like they could span it out so there's just like <laughs> drought one year of just filler episodes that has nothing to do with the overall plot damn so that's it's steven that's universe fantastic. <laughs> yeah, what's happening with Steven Universe right now? I, I haven't watched it recently. Like they just released a trailer, and it actually it's uh it's plot oriented. It uh, without no spoiling too much, it's Steven's like man, it's nice to have a normal day again, and then people at Beach City is disappearing. Ruh -roh. About time. I I want the show to wrap up here soon because I'm getting kind of like I love Samurai Jack, and maybe it's spoiling me to actually get so much like actual story so quickly and not have room for filler, but. For Steven Universe, it's like, hey, it's been going on since, what, 2013, I think? Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. I don't know. We're getting almost to the half-decade point here. Yeah. For a show that's not, like, slice of life, this is taking its time. Jackie Chan sold out again. The best thing, again. The best thing that came out of Jackie Chan Adventures was the Deeper Cut YouTube hoops. Oh, oh right. Oh, my God. God bless YouTube. Deeper Cut. Oh, when I, okay, so when I was younger, I had an argument with Deeper Cut. Like, I, I don't know, there was this one time... Talk to him? No, 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 not talk to him. I was just like a, an angry commenter saying, these YouTube poops aren't as good as the old ones, and then his fans got mad at me, and I, they were all like, fuck you, Pan. Pan, apologize to Deeper Cut right now. The good days. Deeper Cut is possibly dead. We don't know for sure what happened the, the, to him. Apologize to Deeper uh, Cut. Walrus yeah. Guy, Kroger Productions, Deeper Cut. Those yeah. are the... That was the... The father, son, and holy ghost of, of YouTube poops, my friends. Yeah. And you have two options now. You either apologize or insult him. I don't apologize for shit. Deeper cut. You come on this podcast and explain yourself. Fuck you. Yeah, you can fuck me anytime. More like deeper nut. Oh. I, have, I, have, I have a YouTube poop story. Um, There was this Naruto YouTube poop where it was a parody of the first episode. And instead of Naruto beating the shit out of that white haired guy, he instead. <laughs> Fucks him. Yeah, you told yeah. the story, Nolan, about you know not knowing what semen was. Classic Nolan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there, not knowing what semen is, and you just drink something you're not supposed to, and it's just whoops. But is this the end of the podcast? God, I hope so. Yeah. What do you guys? Oh, uh, so what do you have planned upcoming, uh, Saber Sparks? You didn't say what you had planned. Oh, up. um, I got a top ten tragic moments in animation oh, for this week and. Animation itself, or like the the animation industry, I, I animation in general. Okay. So there's a lot to pick from, uh, <laughs> anime, movies included, and then Sa what's up, Saber? And um, as a joke and a reference to this podcast, at the end you should put down in memory of O'Hanlon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he's number one now. I think the most yes. I think the most tragic moment in any animation ever was the time Squidward pranked uh, SpongeBob. Yeah. You little sausage. The <laughs> saddest fucking most pathetic April moment Fools. in all of animation sure. history. I don't know. I thought I thought Combat Carl dying in Toy Story is pretty tragic. That got me pretty good. Combat Carl, who that? When Sid blew up that soldier. Oh like, yeah, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> it's a like Combat Carl. No. <laughs> I was gonna say one of the saddest things that's kind of animation because it's sprite animation, so it counts. Haha, -ha, was drawn to life the next chapter that killed me. That's the only thing that ever got me to openly sob. Oh, <laughs> heard of that, that one? That um basically spoiler alert for Drawn to Life the next chapter. It's revealed that in order to save the life of this kid, they have to erase the world that you've been playing in for the like two games. And huh. it's revealed it, it's revealed that this kid was in a coma from a car accident on his way home from a carnival that killed his parents and mutilated his sister. And Jesus. the uh, and the two main characters, Joey and Mary, were like plushes that they won from the carnival. 
Interesting. Wow. So this is it one of those creepy pastas. No, and it was so bad that when they re-released it in a collection, they changed the ending to the boy like climbing a tree and like falling and hitting his head. Uh, <laughs> that makes wow. it better. He just fucking hits his head. He gets a concussion. We kick yeah. him in the nuts. <laughs> it's better than it's better than getting into a car accident. And his parents fucking die and his sister getting Wait, mutilated. And what like, what like, is what 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 is the game called? Drawn to life, the next chapter. Okay, because I, I I thought you said drawn together. Yeah. To begin with, and I, I was like, did you say drawn together? Yeah. The that, the oh Comedy shit. Central series. <laughs> it was a, a miss a lost episode. Toot was dreaming the whole time. Oh no. A video that I want to work on here soon, and it'll be coming out not this coming week but next week, Lord willing, is uh, I want to talk about YouTube kid cartoons. Mm, uh oh how fucked up they all are oh like it, and, and i i want to dig deeper and and see if there's some kind of underlying reason why like like psychological reason yes like i actually want to like reach out to my college campus to like the psychology department and go i need to find out if there's something going on between kids and and their uh potential curiosity, pe- curiosity for like gross yeah. stuff like because all these thumbnails most I, I remember when I first saw it, I was at my cousin's rehearsal dinner for his wedding, and my nieces were there looking at a iPad watching some Peppa Pig, and then I looked over and uh, then ignored them. They came back. I was I'm like, oh, they're still watching Peppa Pig. And I looked, took a closer look, and it's Peppa Pig like like beating up some other pig in the show. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, Sarah, my sister, th- those are her daughters. I'm like, Sarah, th- what are they watching? Like, why is this Peppa Pig stuff, like, beating up and, like, stabbing people? And <laughs> and she's like, I had no idea. Because the YouTube algorithm, I guess, thinks Peppa Pig. All right, next, next, next. And they start filing in all these really disgusting, bizarre videos of minions, of Elsa, of Spider-Man. Uh, and things that I see are, like, like <laughs> fecal, stabbing, shots are popular, farts pregnancy and and i wonder and paleo and i we're talking about this like is, is this fetish is this a fetish in disguise uh that people post and kids just so happen to kind of be curious about it i don't know it's a big fucking yeah. mess and i want to blow this shit wide open do that video that'd be a good video it's bizarre I, man i know like there, there's <laughs> okay. Go ahead. cnn did a, a story on it saying warning parents like youtube YouTube cartoons aren't so kid friendly, and they're showing all these weird Peppa Pig knockoffs. You remember one of the first ones? It was like SpongeBob in China. That's not. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just that, a, that was a, it's a satire. That's just a regular parody. That's not like intended for kids. That's, that, that doesn't have like the title of like farting Spider Man, Elsa, sexy, twelve hours YouTube. <laughs> for yeah, I saw I, I saw H three H three cover one of those videos, and yeah. apparently it's just this guy, and he's directing the actors, and he doesn't even bother to edit it. He's just oh like, my oh, god! Guys, guys, play together, play together. He, it's so funny. Oh it's my god! A lot of stock sound, and the 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 so far the one that's been the worst so far to me is uh, there's a compilation, and in the compilation of these minions, there's a daughter minion with a baby minion, and and the animation is just atrocious. And they get in this bathtub that they fill up with M and M's, and it's really weird because I'm like, did M and M sponsor this? Because they pull out a bag of M and M's, a very detailed like <laughs> bag of M and M's that they zoom in on that looks better than any other any other thing in the in the show so far, the other video. And then they dump the M and M's in the bathtub. They jump in the bathtub, start playing around. The baby, you start seeing like green farts come out of its butt, and then it shits in the bathtub, and you see a little poop emoji floating around. And the girl minion screams and hops out while the baby minion laughs and starts playing with the feces and the M&Ms. And I'm like, what is, like, what? Why? Why this? Like, did, do our kids, like, do they like this stuff? I'm thinking so. Or is it was fucking with us? Or I don't know. It's I want to find out. <laughs> okay. Good I'm very reluctant. I'm very reluctant. <laughs> but I feel like I, I need to share a story. Oh, boy. Go for it. Okay. Um, when I was super, super, super young, I think three or four, um, you know, it, it was about that age where, you know, parents, parents were like, oh, I'll just, um, I'll just like um, take baths with, like, with two of the kids together because it saves money on water or some shit. I don't fucking know. And uh, I was about to hop in and my brother was like, 
ha, ha. he was like laughing. I was like, what the fuck are you laughing at? My fucking dirty old ass. And he shat in the, and he shat in the tub, and I was like, oh my fucking god. Oh. 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 Yeah, I guess that's a kid. I guess I guess that's a kid thing. I don't know. The, the, here's the th- one last thing, and then I'll, I'll stop talking. So, um, and the, and I mentioned the fetish thing, and the reason why I wonder that is I used to work at Starbucks. And one time at Starbucks, there was a guy who came from the Honey Baked store, Honey Baked Ham store, whatever, a restaurant here in Georgia, and that's connected to the Starbucks thing. And he came over to the Starbucks, and he he looked kind of homeless, and he just kind of in the corner on his laptop. And the hum, Honey Baked folks said, like, "Hey, so uh, we called the police because uh, we saw this guy looking at child pornography in our store, and he's in your store now, so the cops are on their way." And the cops pulled up. And apparently he started to dump all of his stuff. And by the time the cops got there, all they could find on his laptop were videos of kids getting shots, which is really like, what? You know, that's that's really bizarre. And I looked it up. It is a fetish. What? And yeah, it, it, dude, humanity knows no like there's no boundaries. There's nothing. We're, we're a disgusting, awful species. Oh. And and this guy just so happened to have a batch of that on his video, on his, on his laptop. So uh, I, yeah, what do you, I think where do you this goes again? a bit deeper. I used to work at Starbucks. Uh-huh. I, I left it a few months ago, and I tried to I attempt to do the YouTube stuff full time. Did they time. prosecute him, at least? No, unfortunately. They couldn't find evidence. I mean, uh-huh. he dumped it, and why? all they could find were the shots. Why? What's up? Why would you fucking go into a goddamn... Starbucks or honey baked ham or whatever the fuck and look at child porn, you idiot. The, there's some. Oh God, the, I don't know what you're be disgusted or, or enraged about how fucking stupid you are. It's, there's it's, a lot of people that want, like do like like to view porn publicly, like <laughs> yeah, no, so, and, of, which is also probably a fetish. Don't kink shame. Well, by the way, they, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like agreeing to that. We had a student once looking at pregnancy porn, God like coming, damn it. like. Yeah, yeah, like like he he uh, he graduated, but he still came to the school every day, and we were like, just kind of like we can't. I guess we could kick him out, but like if he if literally he's still here, he probably doesn't have much to go home to, and we had to f- eventually ban him from the school because he was looking at pregnancy porn. Uh... <laughs> What's an awkward spot? The last story. So there is a. This- guy there's a lot of homeless folks who would go into the starbucks and there was one time when this guy was sleeping in the corner and uh our manager to walk over and be like sir he can't sleep here sorry you have to leave and he woke up like he was nice at first but he's like really angry and violent and he's like shit's fucked man shit's fucked jesus starts screaming it and one of our our regulars is walking in who's like this like the whitest guy you could possibly imagine and 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 the i mean the guy was black the homeless guy and he's leaving and he <laughs> walked through the door at, right at the same time as the white guys walking through. And he goes, what's good, N-word? Shit's fucked, man. And then he just slams the door and just walks out. <laughs> what the fuck? Everybody just standing there just dumbfounded like, what? We What did God. we do? <laughs> like, we just asked you to leave. That's it. Oh, well. Good times at Starbucks. It, it attracts the craziest of people. Oh, I, I, I tried to go to Starbucks to get that unicorn shake and they ran out everywhere in my place. Oh. You're not missing anything. How, I want to try really. it. It looks so nice. I, I, I don't it's, really think of that as like a thing to like seek out. It's so pink you and know, like, blue. It looks so nice. It's fine, but like I don't know. That, that seems like an item that you would just casually pop in yeah. if you're already out, not like going to like five Starbucks hoping to find Shut it. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the NES Classic. Yeah. Fuck you, Nintendo. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm not ready for another conversation about that. So this is the end of the podcast. (laughs) Don't go watching pregnancy porn in public like most people, okay? I'm Pan Pizza. Who are you, people? I I want to die now. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all want to do I that. I know I end a lot of the podcast with suicide jokes, and this is not different, but I, this is one of the times where I genuinely feel like I want to die after I have discovered all this information. Yeah. Don't worry about it. There's, there's good things out there, like my YouTube channel, Nolan. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. That was that was a... <laughs> That's awful. Shameless. Or, or, or yeah, Saber, yeah. Or Saber, you in general. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I want to oh, die. <laughs> I had to. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It's all good. Let's play a game. Which okay. one of our OCs would be most likely to watch pregnancy porn? Uh, all right. Well, I'm done. Uh, hey, so it was a good podcast. <laughs> who are you people? I'm Pansy. Who are you people? Hey guys. Um, 
uh, Jim, Jim will be back. Never. Uh, Jim will be back someday, hopefully to save us all from this. Save us from our sin. Who are you people? I'm Saversberg. I'm I'm Paleo. I'm uh, Paleo Steno. Go check out my channel. Yeah, links below to everyone. Um, I'm I'm Nolan, and I, I'm really hungry. I'm gonna eat yeah. something. And, and I'm Izzy. Yay. And we're gonna. Let's all go for pizza, everybody. Yeah. Everybody is welcome, except for. Hey, the, can we go uh, to? We kind of. We we have nothing else to do. Can we come? No. no. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Goodbye. Play us out, Emily and Stephanie. Uh, we're, we're going to See pizza. Bye. Bye. Oh, please. Enough. Oh, can we get stuffed crust? But, That'd be great. But I want stuffed crust too. Can you at least bring me some? No, you don't. <laughs> oh. I want pineapple. Okay. Bye. God damn it! <laughs> Wicked weirdness. You gotta see this. Wait. I remember syrup sandwiches and crime allowances. Finesse a ninja with some counterfeits, but now I'm counting this. Parmesan where my accountant lives, in fact, I'm down at this. Do stay with the boobie, taste like Kool-Aid for the analysis. Girl, I can buy your ass the world with my pay stubs. Ooh, that pussy good, won't you sit on my taste bloods? I get way too petty once you let me do the extras. Pull up to your block, then break it down, we play in Tetris. AM to the PM, PM to the AM funk. Piss out your per diem, you just gotta hate him funk. If I quit your BM, I still riding Mercedes funk. If I quit this season, I still be the greatest funk. My left stroke just went viral. Right stroke put a little baby as viral. Soprano C, we like to keep it on a high note. It's a level to it, you and I know. Bitch, be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. Who that ninja thinking that he frontin' on a meme? Get the fuck off my stage, I'm the Sandman. Get the fuck off my dick, that ain't right. I make a play fucking up your whole life. I'm so fucking sick and tired of the Photoshop. Show me something natural like Afro on Richard Pryor. Show me something natural like ass with some stretch marks. Still will take you down right to your mama's couch in polo socks. Hey, this shit way too crazy. Hey, you do not amaze me. Hey, I blew cool from AC. Hey, Obama just paged me. Hey, I don't fabricate it. Hey, most y'all be faking. Hey, I stay modest about it. Hey, she elaborated. Hey, this great poop on that Evie on that TED talk. Hey, watch my soul. Speak, you let the meds talk. Hey, if I kill a ninja, it won't be, be the alcohol. Hey, I'm, I'm the realest ninja after all. Bitch, be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Be humble. Sit down. Be humble. Bitch, sit down. Sit, bitch, be sit down.